Uh, yeah, sorry, I'm going to turn around and go back and get something when we come back. But we are here now. We're going to have a baptism with Joseph. So uh, that's wonderful. We'll do that uh, after the sermon. And how uh, you like it? <laughs> yeah, there you go. Remember, you're supposed to ask that same attitude. Yeah. <laughs> You'll think we're not All right. Uh, just a couple of announcements here. Uh, first of all, uh, we have Bible study on Monday at 7 p.m. Uh, so we're going to join us. That's what we're doing in the program. And then Tuesday, we have morning prayer at 9 30. Uh, Wednesday, we have Quicken. And the third stage, there's a Bible study in Harvard, third part, it's number three at 10.45, uh, and then proceeded by 10 o'clock, which is at five fellows. And, um, you know, so we have added to our prayer list, uh, I need to fly. Anybody else that needs to be on the prayer list or taken off? All right. Uh, if there's nothing else, and I invite you to open up to your folder, so please rise. We're going to uh, sing our first ten. It's uh, ten thousand reasons. And that actually starts off with Bless the Lord on my side.
continue our worship this time and revolt there. And we'll continue today in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and for whom no secrets are hid, cause the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. According to God's word in 1 John chapter 1, verse 8 through 9, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us therefore confess our sin before God and before one another. Moses, merciful God, I confess I have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what I have done and by what I have not done. Now. I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved my neighbor as myself. Therefore I come before your throne of grace, that I may receive mercy and find grace to help in every kind of need. Forgive me, renew me, and lead me, so that I may delight in your will and walk in your ways in the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was going to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. <coughs> and those who believe in Jesus Christ gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them his Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. God of glory, Father of love, peace comes from you alone. Send us as peacemakers and witnesses to your kingdom, and fill our hearts with joy in your promises of salvation. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You may be Genesis 28 chapter, beginning with the 10th verse, and Moses writes the following about the Holy Spirit. Now Jacob left Beersheba and went towards Moran, and he came to a certain place and stayed there that night because the sun had set. And taking one of the stones in that place, he put it under his head and lay down in that place to sleep. And he dreamed, and behold, there was a ladder set up on earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And he said, and the Lord said, no, I'm sorry, and behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie, I will give to you and to your offspring. Your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth, and you shall spread abroad to the west, and to the east, and to the north, and to the south. And in you, and your offspring, shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Behold, I am with you, and will keep you wherever you go, and will bring you back to this land. For I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place! This is not other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. <clears throat> so early in the morning, he took the stone that he had put under his head and set it up for a pillar and poured oil on the top of it. He called the name of that place Bethel, but the name of the city was Luz at first. Then Jacob made a vow, saying, If God will be with me and will keep me in his way that I go, and will give me bread to eat and clothing to wear, so that I come again to my father's house in peace. Then the Lord shall be my God, and this stone which I have set up for a pillar shall be God's house. And of all that you give me, I will give a full tenth to you. Here is the reading of the first lesson. The psalm today is Psalm 148. It's fallen down now. 288, page 288, here, here, here. we respond by half verses. <coughs> Psalm 148. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise Him in the highlights. Praise Him, all you of His angels of His. Praise Him, all His hosts. 
Praise Him, sun and moon. Praise Him, all His shining stars. Praise Him, heaven of heavens. And the waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord. For He commanded it, and they were created. He made them stand fast forever and ever. He gave them a law which shall not pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth. You see monsters and all these. Fire and hail, snow and fog. Tempestuous wind doing his will. Mountains and all hills. Fruit trees and all seasons. Wild beasts and all cattle. Creeping things and winged birds. Kings of the earth and all peoples. Princes and all rulers of the world. Young men and maidens. Old and young together. Let them praise the name of the Lord. For his name only is exalted. His splendor is over earth and heaven. He has raised up strength for his people and praise for all his loyal servants. The children of Israel, a people who are near him. Hallelujah. The second lesson is from St. Paul's letter to the Romans, the fourth chapter, beginning with the first verse. And the Apostle Paul writes the following by the Holy Spirit. What then shall we say was gained by Abraham, our forefather, according to the flesh? For if Abraham was justified by works, he has something to boast about, but not before God. For what does the Scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was counted to him as righteousness. Now to the one who works, his wages are not counted as a gift, but as his due. And to the one who does not work, but believes in him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is counted as righteousness. Just as David also speaks of the blessing of the one whom God counts righteousness apart from works. Blessed are those whose lawless deeds are forgiven, and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man against whom the Lord will not count his sin. Here ends the reading of the second lesson. I invite you to please rise from the reading of the gospel. <clears throat> and the gospel is from the gospel of St. Matthew, the 16th chapter. Beginning with the fifth verse. And the Apostle Matthew writes the following about the Holy Spirit. When the disciples reached the other side, they had forgotten to bring any bread. Jesus said to them, Watch and beware the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And they began discussing it among themselves, saying, We brought no bread. But Jesus, aware of this, said, O oh, you of little faith, why are you discussing among yourselves the fact that you have no bread? Do you not yet perceive? Do you not remember the five loaves of the five thousand, and how many baskets you gathered? Or the seven loaves of the four thousand, and how many baskets you gathered? How is it that you fail to understand that I did not speak about bread? Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Then they understood that he did not tell them to beware of the leaven of bread, but of the teaching of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. The Gospel of our Lord. You may be seated. Shepherd, 
and we need to be fed by you. And so we come, Lord, with hungry hearts for more of you and more of your word. And we ask now by the Holy Spirit to be our teacher, that you would plant your word deep within us, that would bear fruit for eternal life, and that whatever is of sin or temptation of the flesh or of the devil would fall to the ground and die and be of no effect, so that we'd be completely available to all that you have for us now. I pray, Lord, that now the word of my mouth, meditation of our hearts, would be truly acceptable in your son. Our strength and our kingdom. Amen. Thank you. Grace and peace in God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. In the Gospel of Matthew, we read that our Lord Jesus said something that he wants all of us to remember and apply to our hearts. He was speaking to his disciples then, but he's speaking also to his disciples now. And he says with much urgency the following Beware the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Now, why is he so urgent about this? Why is it important for us to get this? Well, in order to understand why this is so important, it would be good for us to consider, first of all, what the word leaven means. In other words, why is he using that word at all? In the Old and the New Testament, leaven is often used as a symbol for sin. A symbol for lawlessness and rebellion. And just like yeast, there's only a little bit that's needed to make the whole lump of dough rise up. It only takes a little bit of sin to cause trouble in your life. It only takes a little bit of compromise to all of a sudden take over your thinking and your speaking, your attitudes and your working out of what was in your life. And all of a sudden, you are now not living for God. You are living for the flesh and for the devil and for every evil thing. So Jesus is being very urgent here. He is saying to his disciples, you need to be careful that you don't allow even the smallest bit of this leaven, this sin, that is being taught by the Sadducees and the Pharisees. Now the question we need to ask then is, what is the sin that Jesus wants us to avoid with regards to the Pharisees and the Sadducees? And very often, when you come to this, this church or any other church, we're going to talk about the Pharisees. But not today. Today we're actually going to talk about the Sadducees. They're often forgotten. But the fact of the matter is, there was a teaching that they had that a lot of Christians unknowingly had in their hearts. They have that sin within them. And if we don't know it, then we can't deal with it. So what was the sin that was in the Sadducees' teaching that we need to avoid? Otherwise, it will take over how we think, how we believe, how we act. Well, we find in Matthew, Luke, and Acts, that the Sadducees, they were the priests in the temple, and they also had the belief that God's supernatural power cannot work for you now, it never worked for you back then, and it will not work for you when you die. They did not believe in heaven, they did not believe in hell, they did not believe in angels, they did not believe in demons, they did not believe that God healed, they did not believe that God saved, they did not believe any of that. Now, the question we have to ask is, how do the Jews believe that? How? The answer is very simple. The Sadducees did not believe the Scriptures. They didn't. First of all, they only accepted the first five books of the Bible. The rest, they considered, I want to do it. On top of that, since they were priests, the only thing they focused on was how to do the sacrifices. With regards to the supernatural power of God, they rejected that even in the five books that they had. That's why Jesus said to them in Matthew 22, He said to them, you are wrong because you know that in the scriptures nor the power of God. Jesus is telling them and us something very important. If you will not believe the scriptures, then you won't see the power of God. You won't. You know why? 
Because the word of God has to be received by faith. God is going to break precious promises. But if we're not going to receive them by faith, we're not going to see what God has in mind. We're not going to see His power. And even if it's right in front of us, we won't recognize it. How do we know that? Remember that Jesus is talking to the Sadducees. What was Jesus known for? By the way, you can even read uh, people of his time who were not believers, but they all write the same thing. You know what he was known for? Healing the sick, raising the dead, casting out demons. He was known as a supernatural prophet. He wasn't just a prophet, he was the son of God. But nevertheless, he was known as someone who acted in the supernatural. God was with him. And yet the Sadducees saw him and went, eh, she's a trick. Why were they so blind? Because they didn't believe the scriptures. And therefore they couldn't see the power of God. Dear friends, you know what that would lead people to if they believe the teachings of the Sadducees? That you can't believe the Bible, that none of the promises of God in your name actually apply to you. That when you die, that's all there is. And on top of that, you can't believe anything that God says. In other words, the, the beast or the sin of the Sadducees was unbelief, doubt, rejecting the word of God for their own understanding. And Jesus says to you and to me, don't let that in your heart. Don't let it in your heart. Because if it gets in your heart, then you're going to start not believing the promises of God. And you know what Jesus wants? He wants you to have every promise that God has made. Jesus came into the world to die for your sins of life. To set us free from power, sin, death, and the devil. So that we may enter into the kingdom of God. And on top of that, he died so that we can be right with the Father. And that we might live a supernatural life just as Jesus did. Filled with the Holy Spirit, doing the work of the kingdom. These are promises of God. And if we will not believe the promises of God, then we won't see any of that manifesting in our life. You know, in the second lesson, we're actually given the example of Abraham. Abraham, when he was promised that he would have a child, was 75 years old. And God made him wait 25 more years. And they said, well, guess what? You're going to have a child. By that time, Sarah is like 99. And she said, ah! She did. She laughed at And God said, why did you laugh? And Sarah realized that he was laughing at you. Oh, no, 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 no. I think, but yeah, I think, sorry. That's why they named the child Isaac. Isaac means laughter. But what we find is that Abraham believed God. It was counted to him as righteousness. And by believing, he saw the power of God move. They had Isaac and the entire people of Israel were created by miracle. A miracle that began by believing God's word. And by the way, you might say, well, okay, you know, I, I, I believe this, but sometimes I have fear in my heart. You know, uh, faith and fear are not opposites. I'm sure that when Abraham heard God say to him, Abraham, you're 100 years old. Perfect. We're going to do it right now. As we read in, in Romans that Abraham was actually like, boy, you know, I believe you, Lord. I don't really know how to do it, though. I don't. But I'm not going to say you can't do it. And Sarah was just lost her because at 99, well, let me ask those of you who are even close to 99, but those of you who are older, do you really want a child at your age? Oh, you got to keep up with this kid. And she laughed, but she wasn't laughing in unbelief per se. She just, wow, I don't even know how you're going to do that. You know why? Because we tend to think in the natural. But thank God, God is not limited by the natural. He's supernatural. 
Israel exists because of supernatural power. And by the way, so does the church. We exist because of the supernatural power of the living God. And so what Jesus is saying is that you exist because God made a promise and kept it. Don't believe the lie <clears throat> that God doesn't mean what he says. Don't believe the lie that, oh, well that was for the time of the apostles and, and God can't do that now. Don't believe the lie, and this is actually something I've actually heard within the church. Don't believe the lie that, well, you can't really trust the Bible because it's written by them. By the way, written by them. What do you expect it to be written by them? You know what? These people that say, well, you can't believe the Bible because it's written by them. Well, you know what? They believe Darwin. I don't know. Is Darwin God? He's a man. Has nothing to do whether it's written by man or not. It has to do with who's inspiring it. God. Believe. Jesus is saying to you and me, believe. Don't buy the lie that you can't trust the Word of God. I just want to share with you that when I was a seminar, many years ago, they had us reading all kinds of books. Where the authors were saying, yeah, you, know, you can't really trust what God says. You can't really believe what Jesus did there. We have professors telling us not to believe what was there. It's a lie. It's not true. Now let me just share this story with you to help you if, you, if you, you're struggling with that. My, my mother, I'm from South Florida. My mother came to visit me. And she had neuropathy. If any of you have neuropathy or know about it, it's a very painful, painful thing. And she was reading this book that she had gotten out of the library of her church, which is a church down in Florida. And in that book, the author said, you cannot believe the promises of God. They're not true. You can't believe the New Testament. It's not true. It really started to disturb her. Praise the Lord. And so she put the book down. She was coming to visit me and her granddaughter. And actually, she wasn't even coming just to see me because she likes my granddaughter, but I like much better than she likes me. And I, I get it. That's the way it works. But anyway, she likes me, but she loves me. But anyway, but what, what was true was that she said this. She prayed and she said, Lord, if your word is true in the Bible, I will be you. And so I'm going to go with my son. I'm going to have him pray for me. But I'm not going to tell him anything. So you're going to have to do the whole thing. So she comes to my house. And she'd been there a couple of days. And she hadn't told me anything. I go up to the shower. The Lord speaks to me in the shower. Tells me, go take your mom. Go pray for her over the church. All right. I take the anointing oil, I go to the church. I said, come on, Mom, let's go. She's like a little puppy dog. We didn't understand that. She's been bouncing around. All that. And when we got there, and make a long story short, she got delivered of demons. So she started to hiss. Jesus delivered her demons. And when she went back to her doctor, who was not a believer, when she went back to her doctor in South Florida, he examined her and he said, You're healed. And you know what my mother did with that book? Threw them in the garbage. So that no one else would be lied to. But there's lots of pressures in the world, both in the church and outside the church, that do not want you to believe. Jesus says today, Don't let that in your mind. Because if you do, then you'll shut the door of what God has for you. And Jesus wants you to have everything that the Father has for your life. And so how do we apply that? Well, we need to ask ourselves, do we have that peace in our heart? Do we have that sin in our heart? Do I really believe what God has said? Or do I not? And you know one way to check that? Check it by looking at the Word and 
Ask yourself a question. Have I ever said this? All right, now you don't have to tell me if you have, but have I ever said this? It says right here in 1 John chapter 1, verse 8 through 9, that if I confess my sins, he is faithful and just to forgive my sins and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Do you believe that or do you say this? Yeah, but. Yeah, but my sins are too bad. Yeah, but I don't think that he wants to really deal with me. If you put a but after the promise, guess what you can have in your heart? That seed of doubt and unbelief. Or maybe you have the seed. Or yeah, I know that, 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 that Jesus says that if I if I call on the name of the Lord, I'll be delivered of this impression that the devil's put in my mind. But or I, I believe that Jesus says that, that he'll he'll meet me at Holy Communion. But as soon as you put a but in front of any of the promises of God, you get a paper and eraser and you've erased everything that he just said. And you close the door on it. So today, listen to what Jesus says. And let's examine our heart. And if that news is there, I want you to join me in prayer. Because the good news is, if it's there, he can cleanse you. He can take that away. So let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, you have given us great and precious promises. And we just declare to you right now today that we believe. We ask you to forgive all doubt that might be in our hearts, Lord. Forgive us, Lord, for listening to the, to the voice of liars. And we ask now that you would just cleanse our hearts. Lord, that wherever there's that but, Lord, we just give it to you. And we ask by the Holy Spirit that your fire would come and purify us and burn out the root and branch of unbelief. And that you would plant your imperishable word, which is able to save our souls and with their fruit for eternal life and take over our minds, bodies, and spirits for the kingdom of God. And now, Lord, grant us by your Holy Spirit to walk with you in faith, love, and obedience, and to be used by you in power to glorify the name of Jesus. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, we're going to sing our next hymn. It's Amazing Grace, found in your in your uh, folder. Painting, painting.
this time, I invite those of your parents and sponsors, whoever wants to fill up, fill up. Let us pray. 
God, we thank you for the gift of your Holy Spirit, which you have poured out for holy baptism through the faith that's in the name of Jesus. We ask now, Lord, that you would bless this family and this home and these children and clean the blood of Father, and we declare that by the blood of Jesus, every demonic assignment was canceled, and the death came from hope, every curse is lifted, and they receive the blessing of Abraham and the blessing of the Spirit. So help the parents and their children to walk in your ways by your grace, that they may give glory to the name of Jesus and enter into all that you have for them, both in this life and for the next. We ask for them true faith, love, and obedience to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And this is yours. This is yours. You can pull that God bless you all. I'd like to close your eyes. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. I'm going to share that peace of one.
body of Christ can do. And the blood of Christ can do. I don't know what we're going to do to the I love all of Jesus Christ, for you and you and his grace.
body by the Lord Jesus Christ, strike you with the Holy Spirit.
Table breaks. Let's sing it. All right. Be proud. 